Mona Lisa, also known as La Gioconda, is the wife of Francesco del Giocondo. This painting is painted as oil on wood. The original painting size is 77 x 53 cm, 30 x 20 and 7 8 in, and is owned by the government of France, and is on the wall in the Louvre in Paris, France. This figure of a woman, dressed in the Florentine fashion of her day and seated in a visionary, mountainous landscape, is a remarkable instance of Leonardo's sfumato technique of soft, heavily shaded modeling. The Mona Lisa's enigmatic expression, which seems both alluring and aloof, has given the portrait universal fame. The Mona Lisa's famous smile represents the sitter in the same way that the juniper branches represent Ginevra Bensi and the ermine represents Cecilia Gallerani in their portraits, in Washington and Krakow respectively. It is a visual representation of the idea of happiness suggested by the word Gioconda in Italian. Leonardo made this notion of happiness the central motif of the portrait. It is this notion that makes the work such an ideal. The nature of the landscape also plays a role. The middle distance, on the same level as the sitter's chest, is in warm colors. Men live in this space. There are a winding road and a bridge. This space represents the transition between the space of the sitter and the far distance, where the landscape becomes a wild and uninhabited space of rocks and water which stretches to the horizon, which Leonardo has cleverly drawn at the level of the sitter's eyes. The painting was among the first portraits to depict the sitter before an imaginary landscape, and Leonardo was one of the first painters to use aerial perspective. The enigmatic woman is portrayed seated in what appears to be an open loggia with dark pillar bases on either side. Behind her, a vast landscape recedes to icy mountains. Winding paths and a distant bridge give only the slightest indications of human presence. The sensuous curves of the woman's hair and clothing, created through sfumato, are echoed in the undulating imaginary valleys and rivers behind her. The blurred outlines, graceful figures, dramatic contrasts of light and dark, and overall feeling of calm, are characteristics of Da Vinci's style. Due to the expressive synthesis that Da Vinci achieved between sitter and landscape, it is arguable whether Mona Lisa should be considered as a traditional portrait, for it represents an ideal rather than a real woman. The sense of overall harmony achieved in the painting especially apparent in the sitter's faint smile, reflects the idea of a link connecting humanity and nature. In the Renaissance which brought together all human activities, art meant science, art meant truth to life. Leonardo da Vinci was a great figure because he embodied the epic endeavor of Italian art to conquer universal values. He who combined within himself the fluctuating sensitivity of the artist and the deep wisdom of the scientist, he, the poet and the master. In his Mona Lisa, the individual, a sort of miraculous creation of nature, represents at the same time the species. The portrait goes beyond its social limitations and acquires a universal meaning. Although Leonardo worked on this picture as a scholar and thinker, not only as a painter and poet, the scientific and philosophical aspects of his research inspired no following. But the formal aspect the new presentation, the nobler attitude, and the increased dignity of the model, had a decisive influence over Florentine portraits of the next 20 years, over the classical portrait. With his Mona Lisa, Leonardo created a new formula, at the same time more monumental and more lively, more concrete and yet more poetic than that of his predecessors. Before him, portraits had lacked mystery, artists only represented outward appearances without any soul, or, if they showed the soul, they tried to express it through gestures, symbolic objects, or inscriptions. The Mona Lisa alone is a living enigma. The soul is there, but inaccessible. 10 Facts You Might Not Know About The Masterpiece One. She lived with Francois I, Louis XIV, and Napoleon. Although Da Vinci began work on his masterpiece while living in his native Italy, he did not finish it until he moved to France at King Francois's request. The French king displayed the painting in his Fontainebleau palace where it remained for a century. Louis XIV removed it to the Grand Palace of Versailles. At the outset of the 19th century, Napoleon Bonaparte kept the painting in his boudoir. Two. Some historians believe Mona Lisa is a self-portrait of Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci died in 1519, and he is buried at a French castle. Italy's National Committee for Cultural Heritage is undertaking an investigation and plans to dig up his skull. They want to rebuild Leonardo's face, using CSI-style technology. Will he resemble the mysterious Mona Lisa? 3. Mona Lisa is not her name. The painting's subject is commonly thought to be Lisa Gherardini, whose wealthy, and presumably adoring, husband Francesco del Giocondo, commissioned the work in Florence, Italy around 1503. 
This explains the less prevalent title for the painting, La Gioconda, or La Gioconda in French. The name Mona Lisa, or Mona Lisa, as the Italians prefer, roughly translates to My Lady Lisa. Leonardo da Vinci never completed the portrait though, when he died in 1519, it was one of many unfinished works left to his assistant. 4. Napoleon crushed hard on her, then her descendant. The French emperor once had Mona Lisa hanging in his bedroom in the Tuileries Palace for about four years, beginning in 1800. It said his fascination with the painting, inspired his affection for a pretty Italian named Teresa Guadagni, who was actually a descendant of Lisa Gherardini. 5. Her eyebrows are a matter of debate. Some claim the subject's lack of eyebrows is representative of the high-class fashion of the time. Others insist her AWOL eyebrows are proof that Mona Lisa is an unfinished masterpiece. But in 2007 ultra-detailed digital scans of the painting revealed Da Vinci had once painted on eyebrows and bolder eyelashes. Both had simply faded over time or had fallen victim to years of restoration work. 6. She's broken a lot of hearts. The portrait was first put on public display in the Louvre in 1815, inspiring admiration, as a string of suitors bearing flowers, poems, and impassioned notes climbed the grand staircase of the Louvre to gaze into her limpid and burning eyes. Mona Lisa often made men do strange things, R.A. Scotty wrote in Vanished Smile, the mysterious theft of Mona Lisa, there were more than one million artworks in the Louvre collection, she alone received her own mail. Mona Lisa received many love letters, and for a time they were so ardent that she was placed under police protection. The painting has its own mailbox at the Louvre because of all the love letters its subject receives. 7. Men have died from loving her. In 1852, an artist named Luc Maspero supposedly threw himself from the fourth floor of a Parisian hotel, leaving a suicide note that read, For years I have grappled desperately with her smile. I prefer to die. In 1910, one enamored fan came before her, solely to shoot himself as he looked upon her. 8. The Mona Lisa is essentially priceless. In the 1960s, the painting went on a tour, where it was given an insurance valuation of $100 million, factoring in inflation, a more recent assessment estimated it's worth $2.5 billion. But the policy was never taken out, because the premiums were more than the cost of the best security. 9. The painting hangs in the world's prettiest prison. Mona Lisa hangs in the center of the Louvre's Grand Gallery, where it is climate-controlled to keep her in the ideal environment. Additionally, the work is encased in bulletproof glass to prevent threat and injury. 10. The Mona Lisa has been attacked. If you look closely at the subject's left elbow, you might notice the damage done by Hugo Angaza Villegas, a Bolivian who chucked a rock at the portrait in 1956. A few months before, another art attacker pitched acid at the painting, which hit the lower section. These attacks inspired the bulletproof glass, which in 2009 successfully rebuffed a ceramic mug hurled by an enraged Russian woman who'd been denied French citizenship. 11. France mourned en masse when she went missing. On August 21, 1911, the Mona Lisa was stolen from the Louvre. The New York Times retroactively compared the public display of grief to that scene in the wake of Princess Diana's death in 1997. Thousands poured into the Louvre to stare in shock at the blank wall where she once hung and leave flowers, notes, and other remembrances. 12. Pablo Picasso was a suspect in the caper. Because he'd been caught buying stolen Louvre pieces before, Pablo Picasso was brought in for questioning. But the true thief would not be caught until 1913. Louvre employee Vincenzo Perugia was a proud Italian nationalist who smuggled the painting out under his smock because he felt it belonged to his and Avinci's homeland, not France. After hiding it for two years, Perugia was busted trying to sell Mona Lisa to a Florence art dealer. However, he did briefly get his wish. Upon her recovery, Mona Lisa toured Italy before returning to Paris. 13. Suspicions arose that the heist wasn't a one-man job. Though Perugia was the only one prosecuted for the crime, it's unlikely he acted alone. At the time of the theft, Mona Lisa was encased in a heavy wood backing and glass case that would have weighed almost 200 pounds, making it highly unlikely Perugia could have pulled it down from the wall on his own. Like, share, subscribe.